Call Hello, Yahawa, Wa Sham, Yahawa Shai, Waha, Rakakwadash, Shalawam, to my hopeful elect elder brother over here at this congregation, Sharayad, Shalawam, to all you hopeful elect elders out there of the Israelite nation who rule well, namely the hopeful elect elder apostles over at the Great Millstone Church. Peace and many blessings to the hopeful elect scattered amongst the earth. To you hopeful elect brothers that I personally labor with. To all you true believers out there of the Israelite race. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. So I'm going to read it again and just slow it down this time. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. It reads, for here, the word here denoting a place, thus a location. And to keep it simple, speaking of the earth, the earth in its entirety. For here, so the earth. And upon considering the earth, you have to consider who is ruling who is governing here on this earth, according to the scriptures, which we know and understand that it, the earth in its current state has been given into the hands of the wicked. And to keep it completely plain, we know that the so-called white man is ruling here on this earth right now. This is the so-called white man's world. He is who holds control over a majority of the major resources that are upon the earth that life depends on, thus speaking of the major food supplies, control over, you know, things like water to the point where if you consider an ocean, there are militaries that survey and control the earth's ocean, navies, even the air with air forces. Um, but the resources overall, when you think of the clothing that's on your back, the land that you live on, the houses that you live in, you know, the land that the food is grown in, all of these within a majority are in the hands of the so-called white man. So he's the ruler here on this earth. And when we consider the so-called white man, we have to start with the chief of these people, which will be the elite, the global banking families who have these resources in their possession to rule, to control. And um, this is important to understand, to understand what we're about to go forth to read throughout the scripture, Hebrews 13 and 14, for here on this earth, which is the so-called white man's world in its current condition, its current state, have we no continuing city? And the we as always being us Israelites, us so-called black people, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indian people that are scattered amongst the earth. We are the Israelites. We are God's chosen people. And here in the so-called white man's world, we don't have a continuing city. We don't have control over major resources. We don't have a land that's ours where we're able to distribute food amongst our people, to grow the food and to distribute it amongst our people without it being sourced in some way through the so-called white man's hand. We don't have the, um, the factories to produce our own clothing without it having to go through the so-called white man. We don't have our own water supply. We don't have a Navy. We don't have a military. We don't have these things. We don't have control. So here on this earth in this current state, we don't have a continuing city. But the point here is, but we seek one to come, which is according to the Lord's will, according to these scriptures, according to the true doctrine of the scriptures. We are seeking the city, which is to come, which is ultimately the entire earth, given into the hands of the Israelites, which equates to the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Lord's elect would be seeking for. The hopeful elite, it's like the hopeful elect desire, the 
the downfall of the so-called white man's world because that notes the installment of the kingdom of heaven here on this earth, which is the continuing city that we seek, which will be a perpetual kingdom, which will rule forever in righteousness. But let's continue before we get all the way into it. It's the book of Second Peter chapter 3. And we go start at verse 13. It says, nevertheless, we, once again, Israel, according to his promise, and according to his promise, the Lord's promise, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai's promise, which is the heavenly father in the name of his son's promise. All right. Which is that the Israelites will reign in the kingdom of heaven here on earth, which is the world that is to come. All right. Which is what, again, the the, the hopeful elect are seeking. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. And that doesn't denote the earth, well, us finding a new earth completely. It's going to be the same earth, but it's going to be restored in righteousness upon the downfall of, once again, the so-called white man's world, this current kingdom. That's what we're looking for, this place to be renewed. New heavens, new earth. It says, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So once again, simply put, the kingdom of heaven being established here on earth, which I'll prove here in the book of Matthew in the sixth chapter. And this is the 10th verse. And this reads, the kingdom come. All right. Thy kingdom come. Salakia. That's the promise. That's Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai has promised. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. So the Lord's will is the only thing that's going to go forth to happen here on this earth. And the Lord's will, thus his promise, is that the Israelites, first and foremost, elect, his elect will be saved. Thus salvation, them getting beamed up on those chariots. And the kingdom of heaven will be established here on earth, which is simply this earth governed and ruled by the Israelites in our correct state of mind. Because upon getting beamed up on those chariots, we're going to receive new bodies wherein we'll have the law written on our inward parts. We'll be perfect and we'll be able to rule perfectly. We'll be able to keep the Lord's commandment perfectly, which is the reason why we were given the command so we could govern, so we can rule. The Israelites' true state is to be the governing, ruling class people above all people upon the face of the earth. So again, Matthew 6 and 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's perfect order. That's righteousness governing and ruling here on this earth. So hopping back to Second Peter 3, I'm going to read it again, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So that's what we're seeking. Verse 14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, you know, so seeing that we are looking for these things, seeing that we desire these things, because these are the things that the Lord's elect are going to desire. A kingdom, rulership, power, authority, and the downfall of this current kingdom. It says, be diligent. You know, to be diligent is to be making haste. To be constantly moving forward. To be constantly at it. At what? Indulging ourselves into this word. Immersing ourselves in this word. Learning this word. Shaving off our old man, becoming a new being, preparing ourselves for that world that is to come. Coming out of our old estate, believing in this world and completely forsaking this world. Serving the Heavenly Father. Um, putting forth our best effort according to the abilities we have been given from the Heavenly Father. It says, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, in the correct state of mind. It says, without spot and blameless. Verse 15, it says, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. And through this long suffering, through us um, being steadfast, through us believing and continuing in this belief, that's what's going to bring our salvation. That's what's going to get us beamed up on our ships. That's what's going to get us to new bodies. And that's what's going to deliver us that kingdom, which we are seeking for, seeing that we don't have any rulership or any government, any power here in this current world. First Corinthians chapter 15. 
and 58, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, all right, this is all, this is out to all the true believers of the Israelite race, to the hopeful elect. It says, be ye steadfast. All right, being steadfast is to be firm, to be strong in your faith, be strong in your belief. It says, unmovable, because we're supposed to be founded upon that rock, which is Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, that solid foundation, the sure foundation. We can't be moving and wavering off of this word because we know the Lord's will will be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. It says always abounding in the work of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. So our job is to continue abounding in this work and our work is to bring forth this word. Our work is to learn this word, abide according to this word, and bring forth this word according to the ability we have been given to do so. Whatever lot we have been given to do so, you know. That's what it's about. And it says, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. It's all going to bring forth this kingdom because us bringing forth this word is bringing forth the downfall of this imagination that we're living in right now, which is the so-called white man's world. So we have to stay fervent in the work. Once again, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. All right? So stay steadfast and stay fervent because, you know, we are looking um, for what's to come, which is that kingdom. All right? First and foremost, that salvation, but ultimately getting into that kingdom where we'll have everything. So I'm just going to say, Lord will, you will edify, call her law Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.